Hey guys, Rob here through the Printscape. Today we're going to talk about temperature towers. I have a couple here that I printed off for reference. We're going to talk about why they're important, how to actually set them up in Cura. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let's talk about why temperature towers are important and why they actually exist. I've got three different spools here. Um, this one is from Inland Filament. Uh, it's just I picked it up from a local electronic store. Uh, the recommended temperature is 205 to 225. So that's a 20 degree range. Um, here is Amazon Basic, uh, temperature range of 190 to 220. So that's a 30 degree range. And here is Overture that I picked up on Amazon as well. Uh, the temperature range is also 190 to 220. So those are some pretty big ranges. Um, before I understood what temperature towers were, I basically just start took the middle point of that. So in this case, with the 190 to 220, I would have gone with uh, 205 as a starting point and then kind of adjusted accordingly. But what a temperature tower does is it basically walks through all of the actual ranges that you define. All right, let's go ahead and get a close up on these temperature towers and talk about why they're important. All right, guys, so I printed out two temperature towers as examples. Uh, we have one of them here that's pretty simple. It's just your a basic tower with a small bridge and then we have a more complex one uh, it's longer bridges has a couple extra things on it we'll zoom in and talk about that here in a second all right here we got the smaller one as you can see it goes from 190 to 240 degrees um, it's incrementing at every five millimeters which is what the size of this is each one of those represent five millimeters uh, but let's kind of turn it a little bit you can see that the bridging looks better on some of these than others. Just looking at this, I would probably go somewhere around the 210 to 215 range. Uh, this temperature tower right here should give you everything you need to know. Um, and it took about an hour and 20 or hour and 30 minutes to print. But I also wanted to show you a more complex one, talk about uh, why they actually exist and let you decide which one you want to use. All right, so this one right here, uh, we're going from 190 to 220. We have longer bridges on the back. Uh, I did want to make a note that I had all bridging settings completely turned off for this, so I can use it as an example. Uh, both of these were printed with a 10% infill. All right, so just looking at this from the front, you can see that the best bridge is probably around 215 or so. Uh, let's go ahead and get a better angle on it and go from the back here. Um, like I said, bridging was turned off, so I expected it to be a little bit messy with that long of a bridge. But 215, which is this one right here, doesn't look bad. And that's a little bit different than the simple one because I think 210 was probably the best on there, but 210, 215, uh, both should be acceptable. Um, this one took about two and a half hours to print, and there's a lot more to it. And there's ones that are even more complex than this. I guess, to me personally, this feels more like a bridge test than a temperature tower. But they do align uh, because you are adjusting the temperature. This is a little bit taller. They're 10 millimeter steps versus the 5 um, both give you about the same results. All right, before we jump over to Cura, uh, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. And go ahead and leave a comment below on whether or not you use temperature towers or do you just use the default settings in Cura. I'm interested to see what everybody else does. Do that. Let's talk about when you actually need to print a temperature tower. If you're using the same type of filament all the time, you only have to do the temperature tower once for that filament. It's when you're using different filaments. Um, from the example before, as you can tell, the three different filaments, they all had different ranges. Um, that's not uncommon. Uh, the more that I've worked with, the more ranges I've seen. You don't need to worry about trying to do a temperature tower for every wall of filament you have. You only have to do one once for that same type of filament. If you're gonna be using uh, Amazon Basics or Overture all the time or whatever the case may be and you're just using the one filament type, you do it once. Um, if you're going to be switching up 
between a bunch of filaments based on whatever is on sale or whatever the case may be. I would just keep a record of what type of filament you've used in the past, what the temperature tower results for that filament type was, and then you only have to do it once for that type of filament. Uh, that's worked out well for me. I've used, I don't know, probably eight to ten different types of filament, or brands of filament, I should say. But that is an important distinction that I just thought of. The temperature tower is for that type of filament and that brand. So if you're using Overture all the time, as an example, uh, and it's PLA, then you're fine. But if you're going to get Overture nylon, I don't even know if they make it, but just using that as an example, that temperature tower is not going to be relevant for the different materials. So you will have to do a different one for that material type. Now let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, now that we have Cura up, let's go ahead and download our temperature tower. Um, I'm going to link to the simple and complex one in the description below, but for this example, I'm going to use the simple one. Uh, there's one thing that I wanted to show you here. Uh, this one, they have two separate files. They have with and without the bridge. I personally would recommend the one with the bridge. If you go to the one without the bridge, you just have the slight temperature changes and then the little overhang. And to me, that doesn't give you enough information to really gauge anything. So I do the one with the bridge. It doesn't take much extra time. So let's go ahead and download that and then and put it into Cura. So, all right, go ahead and close this out. All right, now that we have this in Cura, let's go ahead and do a quick time-lapse video of both of the temperature towers printing, and then we'll walk through actually how to set this up. guys I hope you enjoyed those time lapses I did speed them up quite a bit just for the sake of time but uh, I thought they were fun to watch all right so let's go ahead and get started here uh, as you can see we've got our simple temperature tower um, let me zoom in a little bit here so we can all right so first let's start with the base layer uh, this one starts at 240 so we want to make sure that our actual temperature is set at 240. Uh, so we'll go up here, we'll go to uh, material, and then change our printing temperature from 200 to 240. Uh, and then also since we're in here, let's go ahead and verify our infill. I've been printing these at 10%. I found that if you go too dense, you don't really notice much of a difference. Uh, so 10% is decent. Uh, I wouldn't do zero. There's really no support at all, and it doesn't turn out that good. All right, so let's close this out. So that gives us our starting point. Um, now, it is important that you know the actual height get gaps between these. Uh, this one specifically is uh, five millimeter. Let me go ahead and show you. Uh, typically, in the descriptions, it will tell you what the actual gaps are. As you can see here, this one starts at 240, and then you decrease it by 5 degrees every 5 millimeter. So that's going to be important. Let's close this back out. All right, so where this is actually done is you have to modify the G-code settings here in Cura. So if you go up to uh, Extensions and then go to Post Processing, you'll see Modify G-code. Let's go ahead and open that up here and then we want to add a script. Uh, the important one, the one that we're looking for, is change at Z. Uh, I know it says experimental, but it's been experimental for um, since like the 3.x Cura line, I believe. I don't know if it's gonna come out of experimental, but it does work. All right, so let's go ahead and add that. All right, so as you can see here, the default height was five millimeters, so we don't have to change anything. And we really want to look at change extruded temperature here. So we'll go ahead and enable that. So we were at 240. Now we want to drop to 235. And then we want to add another one. And then this time it's going to be 10 millimeters because it's going to be the 5 plus another 5 here. Um, and then 230. 
and then we will keep doing that until we get all the way through. I'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit so you're not just watching me enter the same data. All right, now that we got all these entered, what I'm gonna go back through and do is just verify that I'm stepping through all of these correctly. Uh, I highly recommend you do the same. It's easy to skip one or miss it if you're not tracking it as you're going. All right, so uh, five millimeter, 235, 10, 230, 15 to 25, 20 to 20, 25 to 15, 30 to 10, 35 to 05, 40 to 100, 45, 195, and 50, 190. Uh, I don't know if you noticed when I was actually entering them, I did go back and kind of look at the previous one. Like I said, if you're not actually scratching them out or crossing them out as you're going, it's easy to forget what the previous ones were, so it's always worth spending that extra minute or so at the end just to make sure that you have it right. Um, if you enter the wrong values here, the entire test will be um, basically off and it won't provide you accurate information. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and save it. And then we can slice uh, like I said before, I think this one took about an hour and a half, and it's shown about an hour and 27 minutes, so that sounds about right. Um, so that's really all there is to it. Um, one other thing you're going to want to do is, after you save it, you're going to want to actually just take a quick look at the G-code file to make sure that you're not missing anything. Um, so what I'm going to do is here, is just the memory card I was using, um, I'm going to open this with Notepad++. Uh, I recommend Notepad++ over Notepad if you're not using it. It's free and provides a lot more functionality. Um, apparently I've got a lot of tabs open, but let's ignore that for now. <laughs> All right, so let's search for, uh, the easiest thing to search for is M104. Uh, you'll see here that you have the value of 240, so that's going to be your starting temperature. The next one is going to be 235. You basically just wanted to make sure that it is actually updating the G-code file and decreasing the temperature as you're going. So this looks good. Um, then I'll go ahead and close it back out and remove the actual SD card, plug it in the printer, and then start the print. If you guys have any questions on the process, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to help you through any issues that you're having. Uh, the process isn't too bad, it's just important that you actually go through and set the temperatures. It's easy to forget, but Cura does make it somewhat easy to do. You just gotta remember. Alright, so make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. Alright guys, that covers everything related to temperature towers. That should give you enough information to get you started. You now know how to actually set one up in Cura. It's a little bit different because you do have to make sure that you are adjusting the temperatures or your temperature tower is gonna to be one temperature the entire way through, and that's pretty much pointless. Uh, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time.